Hello my friends, welcome to the metal shop. Uh, no how-to video this week, because as you can see, I actually took my Jeep out and used it this past weekend. And technically I'm on vacation at the time that this video is airing. And uh, I'm, so you can, uh, don't bother to hit me up in the comments about don't let people know when you're on vacation. I have a house sitter. And believe it or not, George, the shop dog, the really nice black lab I have, is actually not very friendly to strangers in the house. So, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to come into my house without uh, one of his owners being present. Anyway, I digress. So, I did uh, take the Jeep out this past weekend and actually used it. So, I thought that I would give you some of my personal tips for off-roading. This is just what I did. I'm sure there's, you know, a thousand and one videos on... YouTube about how to prep your Jeep for off-roading, but this is just going to be, you know, mine. So, and I'm going to give you my, basically my top seven, and they're pretty broad, and then, uh, you know, maybe some honorable mention type of stuff. So, if you want to go off-road, first thing you got to do is have a vehicle that's capable of doing so. You got to know your trails, you know. You're not going to take a, you know, bone stock Jeep out on the trails that I went on this weekend. So first things first, you need a lift. You just, you know, you need a lift to do serious off-road um, trails. And I, by lift, I mean a suspension lift. Body lifts are great for putting bigger wheels and tires on, but you need a suspension lift first to, to get that ground clearance Believe me, I used this ground clearance this weekend and it made all of the difference. So a good quality suspension lift, body lift in conjunction with that, not just a body lift is basically what I'm saying. So number two is going to be wheels and tires. After you install that lift, put on some big old wheels and tires, some big knobbies that will get you through those trails. Got to have them. And... A good quality spare definitely need a spare you know full-size spare you know you're gonna you could break a bead whatever puncture your tire out on the trail you want a good, good sized high quality spare so after that in my opinion I would not go trail riding without a winch now you know winches can be expensive if you get a worn winch you know you're probably going to spend you know better part of a thousand bucks i went with the quadratech brand it was about 500. Um, there's the traveler brand which is sold at uh, tractor supply which is even cheaper than this and you can't afford a winch um, you know get yourself a good come along um, and with a winch you want the accessories to go with it you want d-rings and hooks to use your winch and I actually picked up this accessory kit uh, from Quadratech it's not and again Quadratech brand will sell you an accessory kit for roughly a hundred bucks this one was a little more expensive I thought it was a little nicer a little more comprehensive it's by Smitty built you buy a worn um, winch kit it can cost you three to five hundred dollars okay so something you absolutely positively have to have with a winch is a snatch block this way you can hook this snatch block to a tree and you can pull yourself in any direction you can pull yourself in reverse with your winch that's mounted on the front of your vehicle snatch block um, with it and i won't get into everything that's in here a pair of gloves it's nice in there there is a tow chain in this one came with more D-rings, came with a strap, a good nice toe strap, and a tree saver, which just wraps around a tree to hook onto. It's just a you know big four-inch wide uh, nylon strap to wrap around the tree. So anyway, so wear a winch and the accessories to go with your winch. Now I mentioned you can't afford a winch, you could do a come along. Now you my number, I believe I'm up to the number, where am I at? Number four? Numero quattro, numero trace, we're at three, yes, I can count, is a good high lift jack. You're not gonna get a 33 inch spare on with your jacking tools that came with your Jeep. 
you need a good high lift jack. And in a pinch, a good high lift will act as a come along. See, I've got extra D-rings here, and I have this extra jaw attached to my high lift. Um, a good high lift jack, and I'm going to include in this same number three, I'm going to include tools. A high lift jack is a tool. I'm going to include a good shovel, a good little hatchet, a good something like that to go with your high lift jack in the tool department. So moving on, oh yeah, so let's see here. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna give a quick pause here. All right, so we are still on the numero trace in the high lift jack and the tools department. Make sure you have a lug wrench. And if you have locking lugs, make sure you have the lock to take your spare off and take your wheels off. Um, I have a nice Gorilla lug wrench with an extension on it because don't forget these giant wheels and tires, you're going to need an extension to get in there to get those lugs. You need to do your spare. Along with the high lift, I said tools. I have just a basic tool kit. You know, I got some sockets in here, um, electrical tape, duct tape. I have some of that special tape that will go over a hose and it will seal up a hose. Um, basic, basic hand tools. You know, you want some zip ties, some stuff like that in your, your bag of tricks. So number four, numero quattro. We are, make sure that you have a cell phone with you and a charger. You can use your cell phone as a GPS or have a separate GPS, I'm sorry. That is a charger, that little um, hexagon that you're not seeing at all. Wow, great focusing job there. Cell phone, charger, GPS. It, regular old fold out maps will also work you know, in a pinch, but bring your cell phone, bring a cell phone charger, bring your GPS with you. Okay, number five, and you can easily switch number five with number four, is a cooler with food and water. Good enough, you know, good amount of water for you, whoever you're traveling with, some sodas, you know, whatever, whatever works, and some food. Pretty, pretty basic, pretty basic right there. You need, your Jeep needs fuel, you need fuel. Don't forget that. Okay, number six, uh, clothing. It may be hot out, you know, when you head out, but don't forget that sun goes down and if you're stuck, you're gonna get cold. Make sure you have, you know, maybe you want rain gear. You definitely want, at the very least, you want a sweatshirt. You want good quality footwear. You, this is not what you wanna wear when you are out four wheeling good quality footwear because you might be walking. You never know. Something to stay warm and dry. You know, change of clothes to stay dry. If you get stuck crawling through muck and mud or a big water hole, running your winch or whatever, um, you're going to want to change of clothes to stay dry. Along with that same thing, you know, keeping yourself clean and warm and dry, you're going to want sunblock and bug spray. These are pretty simple things. Don't forget the lip balm as well. Very simple things. And my number seven is go four-wheeling, if you can, go with a friend. <laughs> go with a friend to tell you that you can winch him, he can winch you, you can pull each other, he may have different tools than you, he may have more knowledge, less knowledge than you. Go four-wheeling with a buddy. Use the buddy system. And for my foray out this uh, weekend, I discovered a couple of things that I really need to get. I'm going to get, I had problems with, this is a five speed, my Jeep is a five speed, and I had problems, and of course, I love the internet. You know, you get right on YouTube, I'm like, well, if I've had this issue, guess what, I guarantee you a lot of other people have had the same issue, and of course I was right. With, when you start bouncing, your foot is bouncing on the throttle. And this thing is, you know, when you're trying to climb a hill and you get the old, you need three feet. You know, you need one foot on the clutch, one foot on the brake, one foot on the gas. Problem is God only gave you two feet. So I did purchase, uh, there's one company out there, the name escapes me right now. You do a quick search, it's about $36. They make a good quality hand throttle. I will do an installation video on the hand throttle that I'm going to be installing. Um, 
this Jeep has a cover on it, you know, for again, maybe you want to cover. I don't plan on off-roading at night. I just, it's one of those things. I also ride motorcycles. I don't ride a motorcycle at night if I can avoid it. So I'm not going to be going crazy with the lighting. I have good quality headlights. I have these, these giant Bosch um, driving lights. But if you intend to go off-roading at night, you need one of them giant light bars that goes along the top of your windshield. Just, you know, be ready there. The other thing that I found is, and let's give another quick pause here. Sway bar disconnects are great. These, you know, along with your lift, you do this, and I actually broke one. I didn't disconnect it this weekend, and either, I mean, maybe one wasn't put in when they worked on the Jeep the last time, I'm not sure, but sway bar disconnects are a great thing, and they're relatively cheap, and they give your suspension a way, way, way more travel. So, anyway. Those are just, you know, some of my basics. Of course, there's, there's tons and tons more. You know, you're talking about, you know, built up, you know, built up axles, um, you know, diff, you know, all these different suspensions, better wheels. You're talking about bead locks. There's tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. But this is what I did to prepare for off-roading. You know, I live in New England and I felt like I was very well prepared. I forgot my cell phone charger. Um, bad on me and I forgot bug spray and I you know I really I didn't need either one of them in this case but I, I wished that I had those with me and the only thing the glaring error that I had when I came back was that hand throttle I really could have used the hand throttle and before I go out again I will have it so just my tips on uh, off-roading like I said I will tell you that you know give you guys some a little bit of bonus here I have uh, you know some upcoming projects coming on the Jeep. I, you know, I sold one of my vehicles. I'll get into that probably a little later, but I do have some good projects coming. I've got uh, front and rear differential covers coming. Um, I got all royal purple synthetic fluids for the front and rear diffs for the transmission and the transfer case, which is something when you purchase a used Jeep that should be one of the, and I've had this thing this October will be a year. You want to swap those fluids unless you have documentation proving that it was done. That's just basic, basic Jeep maintenance. Those fluids should, should be swapped out. So I have that coming. I have a basic uh, lift for the hardtop that I will be installing. I bought a full Borla exhaust system, headers, and a catback system that I will be installing. This came with an exhaust already installed on it. It's a Dynamax, and there's nothing wrong with Dynamax. It performs well, but as far as an aftermarket exhaust goes, it is one of the cheapest ones made. It's aluminized steel. Mine is rusty and super corroded, and that's just not the way I do things. If I'm gonna replace an exhaust system, I'm going with the best that you can buy, T304 stainless, a Borla system from front to back, and I will do a detailed um, installation video on that. I bought a Highline set of Highline louvers for the Jeep, and I chose to do powder coated black, and I may leave it powder coated black. Um, I felt the powder coat is a better base for paint should I decide to paint. I do have the touch of paint that I could use to match this. So hang a standby just one more, please. Oh yeah, trying to remind, remind myself what I got. Um, I bought a set of the best top um, door pockets for these doors. They're supposed to be shipped directly from the manufacturer. Really nice set of door pockets. You'll know you don't have a lot of storage in these Jeeps and it will provide you know, a nice soft armrest uh, here as well. So all those things are upcoming. I have an inverter in there too to get back to the stuff that you should have with you. I have a little power inverter, 12 volt to uh, 110. Um, not a lot of amperage, it's not the best thing, but hey, it's, you know, I threw it in there, handy, handy to have. Oh, look at that, nice. Yeah, so my friends who said that uh, I'm running a, that I've got a, you know, mall rated, you know, pavement queen of a Jeep, there you go. So anyway, so that's what we got here. My tips for off-roading and some upcoming projects. I really appreciate you guys' support. Please consider subscribing if you're new. Give my videos a thumbs up if you are so inclined. Give me a share 
And I know I've been saying it, um, I do plan on upgrading my equipment. I am getting a new cell phone, like I said, while this video is aired, I'm actually on vacation. So it's gonna be a little while before I upgrade to the iPhone 8 and start shooting videos with that. So please, please, please bear with me, but I promise there is you know, upgrade in the future. I forgot to mention good suspension seats and good seat belts as far as off-roading, but there's a thousand and one things you can do. All right, my friends, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.